welcome to Racing Ramble and let's get stuck in with round one of the MotoGP Championship in 2024. And I have to apologise that I'm late with this one, but I went for surgery on my scaphoid and I was out of action for a couple of weeks. But here's the results, so let's get stuck in. Qualifying went in the way of fast man Jorge Martin, who once again demonstrated his superior one-lap speed. Next to him on the grid was Alicia Spargro on the factory Aprilia, and the Nea Bastianini rounded out the front row on the factory Ducati. Standout performances for me on the grid were Brad Binder on the KTM in fourth, and Mark Marquez on his first showing on the Ducati in sixth, and of course, rookie sensation Pedro Acosta, who put it on the grid in eighth. Saturday's shorter sprint race and lesser points went in the way of poor man Jorge Martin, who went away at the front and was never really headed. But he was pushed all the way by Brad Binder on the KTM and Alicia Spargro on the factory Aprilia, showing that the Aprilia and the KTM are competitive this year. Standout performances in the sprint again went to Mark Marquez for finishing fifth and Pedro Acosta, who brought it home in eighth. And Sunday spoils went in the way of current world champion Francesco Bagnaia on the factory Ducati. Pushed hard though by Brad Binder on the factory KTM and Jorge Martin on the other factory Ducati. And other standout performances from Sunday's race, I'd have to say is again Mark Marquez for really riding well and coming home in fourth. And Pedro Acosta for getting right up there for most of the race before really shredding his tyres and languishing back in ninth towards the end. But that kid is super fast and really fun to watch. That's it for the results. So let's ramble on about round one. And first up, race winner and current world champion Francesco Bagnaia. I have to say his race craft is phenomenal. He's smart rider, he's a fast rider and boy is he consistent. He's world number one for a reason and he's going to be a tough man to beat this year. Also, right up there, they might be world number one and manufactured number one. That's Ducati, but they're still the ones to beat. It looks like their 2024 bike is even better than their world beating 23 and 22 bike. Ducati, well done. They're still pushing boundaries. They're still the ones to beat. But not far behind them, and that's Brad Binder and KTM. Wow, what a fantastic weekend they put on. Second in the main race, second in the sprint on the Saturday. And hey, they are close to the front. And if you can fight for a podium, you can then fight for wins. And if you can fight for wins, you can dream a championship. Could Binder and KTM do that? Well, from the start of the season, they look fantastic. Talking about fantastic, the KTM start device. Wow, that thing is lightningly fast. They got off the start, both Binder and Miller, like bullets on both Saturday and Sunday's races. So I'm sure that's going to come into play later on this year. But where was Miller? He actually finished last on Sunday's race. Let's just hope Jack can turn it around. On to Jorge Martin and wow, raw speed once again from Jorge Martin. But I think maybe some more maturity. He looks like he's just settled down a bit. I think possibly in the past, he would have either crashed or just burned his tyres up in that long main race, but he didn't. He settled down. In fact, he conserved his tyres so much that he actually got his fastest lap with about two laps to go. So he did an amazing job of being really mature, settling down. He's still got the raw speed. And I think this year is going to push Banyaya for the championship all the way. Also looks strong, and that's Mark Marquez. Wow, he's been on a Honda for such a long time. Now he's on a year-old Ducati, a privateer team. But boy, he looks strong. A solid foundation that he's planted there in testing, and also in the first race. He says it's not his favourite track, but he was, what, sixth on the grid, fifth in the sprint race, fourth in the main race, and not that far behind. He looks great. Also, alongside him, his brother Alex also looks fast. And I have to say, both Marquez brothers look happy. And a happy team is usually a fast team. Speaking of fast, and that's the rookie sensation, Pedro Acosta. My goodness, this kid is the real deal and probably the next big thing since 
Mark Marquez, before Marquez, Rossi, before Rossi, what would that be? What, Spencer? Let me know in the comments what you think of Pedro Acosta, but I have to say, he looks amazing. He was really fast in both the sprint and the main race, and I can't wait to see what he does for the rest of the year. Also looks competitive, and that's Aprilia. Alicia Spargo looks even faster than last year. He's, what, 34 years old now? He's got a lot of experience, but he looks happy on that bike. Aprilia looked competitive. So on the right racetrack with lots of corner speed, I'm sure Aprilia are going to be on the top step of the box. Way off the podium, unfortunately, and that's Honda and Yamaha right now. They are lagging behind. They were more battling for midfield places for much of the weekend. Nothing to stand out there on an improved bike from either Honda or Yamaha. They've got a lot of catching up to do. Let's see what they can do in the next races. But round one is a unique track. It's a long lap. It's got a fast straight. It's a night race. It's in the desert. They have all kinds of unique temperatures and wind and dust at that track. I don't think it's a real reflection on how the year is going to pan out. There's lots of riders, there's lots of bikes in the mix. And we're just going to have to see how the next three, four or five races really pan out before we can see how the season is shaping up. Biggest disappointment for me was the factory Honda rider of Luca Marini, who, let's not forget, this is Valentino Rossi's half-brother. And when Rossi joined that team, he was at the sharp end of the uh, field. Luca Marini right now was lagging right at the back. In fact, he nearly got beat by Jack Miller and Jack Miller crashed and got back on. So yeah, Luca Marini, big disappointment. But anyway, let's see what more circuits can bring and throw into the mix. Next up, Portimao in Portugal, which is a technical, twisty track and it should bring out totally different results. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and of course, leave a comment.